and it just really melted my heart. Let's talk about the book I'm currently reading, The Lost Story by Meg Schaffer. I picked this up because it said that it was inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia, which at first I was super excited, but then I was kind of nervous because uh, even though it's inspired by, like that's still a lot to live up to, but I'm happy to report that I am getting a little bit of Narnia vibes. This is about two boys who go missing in a forest and six months later they return in perfect health and no explanation as to what happened. Only one of the boys, Jeremy, still has his memories and knows the truth that they were in a magical realm. It's 15 years later and they both decide to go back to the same forest to help a woman named Emily find her missing sister that she's never met. This book is literally my childhood dream Honestly, even now, like as long as I could bring my wife with me, I would still go through a magical portal. I really like how one of the characters, Rafe, doesn't have his memories. And so we're getting to discover alongside them kind of who he was in this other world. But there's also this really interesting dynamic between these two men because Jeremy, he remembers. So he remembers the bond that they formed, whereas Rafe, it's like it never happened. Between some of the chapters, there are these storyteller notes where the narrator breaks the fourth wall and I love them because they're so witty. And I'm assuming that it's a character in the book. I just don't know who yet. So far, this has such a nostalgic feeling and it almost, I don't know if this is gonna make sense, but it almost makes me feel homesick for like a magical place that I've never been. I will say though that for some reason, I'm just not quite connecting with the characters even though I really want to. It's just not, like it's just not hitting right. Maybe it's the pacing. It is pretty fast and as a reader, I really need to like wallow in a character's emotions to really form that attachment that will then affect me. So because of that, I don't think that it'll be a five-star read for me, but it's still such a cute read and I'm loving these like nostalgic, warm, found home feelings that I'm getting from it. As a kid, escapism through books, like I can't even like, convey the significance it had for me and my mental health. God, I'm not gonna cry on camera, <laughs> but okay. I think what I'm trying to say is that this book feels like a safe place. Like it feels like the hug you needed when you were a child and like you had to find it elsewhere in like magic and fantasy. And yeah, so even if I don't connect with these characters by the end, this feeling that I have reading it, I don't know, it's so warm and sweet and it's really special. So when I updated you last, I got a little emotional. Uh, and so I thought that was that. However, I have never cried so much reading a book. Honestly, I was a little shocked that I got so emotional especially because this book is like really predictable, but also not in a bad way. I gave it four stars and I really debated on what to rate this because I think it did a fantastic job like speaking to my own inner child and it will always have like such a special place in my heart because of that. But <laughs> I was not too fond of the prose which sounds so trivial when speaking of matters of the heart, but I just prefer a more like flowery writing style. 
If you've read this, my favorite part was the apple kissing scene. And if you have not read this, you absolutely should. It's this like storybook fantasy about belonging and finding home, but not only in like a physical place, like finding that within other people. And it just really melted my heart. I started reading Two Twisted Crowns by Rachel Gillig. This is the sequel to One Dark Window. Um, here's the vlog where I read and talked about how much I love that book. But if you have not read Two Twisted Crowns or the first one, skip this. I will not be avoiding spoilers. I read One Dark Window only a few weeks ago, so it was really easy for me to get back into this world. But even if it hadn't been, that first chapter where we see Raven and he's invisible, but he's like digging through the grave dirt and like all you see is like the blood dripping from his hands. Like that was pretty intense and I thought that was a great way to start the book. Right now I'm about halfway through the book and I think they're just about to leave that outpost that captured them. I need Elspeth back. I fell in love with her and Raven and this separation, this absence is really not making my heart grow fonder for this series. Elm and Ioni, I wasn't really drawn to them in the first book. And so I'm not really invested in their romance, which really sucks because that's such a main focus in this book. I did start to warm up to them though when they spent time together in that secret room using the chalice. Something about me is that I'm never really drawn to the prince characters. Like off the top of my head, I can only think of one prince that I have like absolutely adored and that was Nasir from the We Hunt the Flame duology. Elm is growing on me though, but Ioni, I just, I don't know. I just don't care for her. And so it's hard for me to root for a relationship where I only like one of them. Okay, let's talk about the maiden card. I am so glad that there is more to it than just beauty. I love that generations of women have been keeping its healing power a secret. These men saw the power of the maiden card as insignificant. So they just like handed them off to like the women. And we actually started talking about this in my book club, kind of like the pretty privilege and how there is like a certain leverage that you have when you're considered beautiful especially in like a culture like this one. But I still hated how shallow the maiden card felt, especially in comparison to the others. Also, I kind of hate how when the Shepherd King was bartering for the maiden card, his whole purpose was to heal his daughter, but then he was just like, oh, I'll throw in beauty as like an extra gift. And I know that it's for the plot and 
it would mess the other cards up. But like as a father, like you could have given your daughter anything else, like intelligence, wealth, protection, or like even just health alone would have been enough. But you were like, mm, what my daughter needs is just beauty. Sleepy baby. Also, look at my cute bat. Isn't it so cute? All right, I finished it. Um, I'm a little disappointed, but only because I love the first book so much. And like, even though I wasn't trying to, maybe I went in with too high of expectations, but I still gave it four stars. When we learned that Hoth killed Ione, I gasped. And then to learn that the maiden card can bring you back to life. I really thought that it was so well done, especially when Hoth finds out what the card can do. It really like increases the tension. And I definitely had like a little bit of anxiety reading it. I do have a question though. If one was to constantly be using the maiden card, would they just be immortal? Back to Hoth, I love him. Well, I don't love him, but I love what his character does for the plot. Like he's just so horrible, but I thoroughly enjoy every scene that he's in. Okay, the ending. I thought it was pretty obvious that the Yus were descended from the Shepherd King. However, I did not expect for Elm to be the balance that Blunder needed because he is a Rowan, but like his family are the Yus, and I really liked that. Ione and Elm are pretty cute, but I really wish that we didn't get their wedding scene. Instead, we should have got to see Raven and Elspeth finally unite. And the fact that that scene does not exist in this book is criminal and I feel robbed. Okay, last thought. I'm really sad that we didn't really get to know Jesper. I think there was definitely time in this book. The scene where she sacrifices her charm to guide the others through the Alderwood, I just think that would have been way more impactful had we been given the opportunity to connect with her more. I would absolutely read a book with her as the main character. I don't know if that's a thing or an intention, but I think I would like for that to happen.